Okay.
few minutes as soon as they come out the bathroom. <laughs>
pray. Almighty God, as we come at this time, Lord, we want to we come to worship, praise, and glorify you, Lord. Lord, be with us this morning as we come together. Give us the Spirit, Lord, to sing praises to your name. Open our hearts and our eyes to your word. And, and Lord, just, just give us a refreshing and a renewing of your spirit as we come together to worship, praise, and glorify you. We thank you for all that you've done, and we just ask that you'll be with us and help us. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In the way of announcements, just, uh, I guess, a few things that are taking place and will be, will be happening. Uh, nothing, nothing in August. As a matter of fact, it looks like, uh, it, lo it looks like as well, all those hurricane systems that, that they said out in the Gulf there, nothing's going to come up in, in, in August as well. So uh, even the one that's right now forming uh, supposedly up around the Florida Avenue, that's just going to go straight across. And unfortunately, we won't even get any rain out of it. So I was hoping for maybe a little rain, but all of that. But we thank the Lord that, you know, at least they're just going to keep on going. Uh, with it. So nothing taking place as far as in the month of August, but um, September the 4th, uh, first Monday in September, of course, is Labor Day, the unofficial end of summer. Uh, no school on that day in St. Tammany Parish. And the 23rd of September is the actual first day of autumn. No guarantee going to be cool weather. Now, according to the Farmer's Almanac, we're supposed to have a colder winter this year. We'll see if that materializes or not here in the South. But they're talking about having a colder winter uh, for us than we did last year. So we'll, we'll see if they're, if they're true, uh, if, if what they predicted will happen and come in place. But anyhow, September 23rd is the actual first day of autumn. Uh, you find us on Facebook and also on YouTube as well. Uh, again, let me just put it out there for everybody. Um, um, if anybody is interested, not that I'm trying to take anything away from Al, but if anybody's interested in teaching the adult Sunday school, let me know. Pray about it. Think about it uh, concerning the adult Sunday school. <clears throat> if anybody would like to do that. Concerning it would be good. And if anybody would like to lead the music in the worship area, pray about that and let me know concerning that as well. I think with everything going around and taking place as of right now, um, just my thought, and, and, and for those of you who come on Wednesday night, just please let me know. I think we're going to cancel this coming Wednesday, if that's okay with everybody, because there are quite a few people that are out. Uh, it seems like some things are going around and taking place. And rather than maybe uh, people getting sick by coming together and being in that close proximity, because I'm in the kitchen and we're in the back room back there as far as all that, I think this coming Wednesday we'll not have Wednesday night Bible study. Um, uh, my wife is out sick, Clarence is out sick, um, Sarah's out sick. Now, Sarah's got COVID. Uh, Clarence phoned and said he was under the weather. Al is out. He's got uh, different things going on with his legs and his back and other things as well, and I think several other people as well. So uh, if it's okay with everybody, what is the thought? I, I know it's, it's a rash thing. For those of you who come on Wednesday night, what, what do you think? You tell me. No Obviously, we have no opinion. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I'm just saying, if you do want to have it, we'll have it. I'm just being concerned for everybody else. But if people, but if you want to have it, okay, we'll have it, and we'll go from there. Uh, you do have, you do have an opinion, and you do have a. But a nobody's expressing their opinion. Well, the thing of it is, Daddy's our teacher. That's yes. it. And if she's not feeling well, even if she feels better by Wednesday. She would still have to prepare her lessons and yeah. go through all the things that she goes through prior. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. And I don't think she's up to it. I don't know. So I think it's best just not to have it. I agree. 
Right. And also with, with ginger in them, they do a lot of the cooking. And without under the weather, that just makes it harder on them too. So I think I think you're better off, like you say, not having it this Wednesday. What you got, Bobby? No, I was gonna agree with you. I, I think that Okay. Yeah, I'm just concerned for everybody else and what you know. Everybody, and I agree with you. You know, my wife she's got a study and everything else, and I don't know how much time she will have as far as you know, um, any better or anything else like that. It, you know, it's a shame. You know, and this, I guess, this is one of the drawbacks of being, you know, uh, members or we having, you know, being with a small church. You know, we do count on maybe one or two people or three people, and that's it. And then when that one or two persons get sick or whatever. Then you know, then we have to shuffle things around. <laughs> At least that's what I call it, shuffling around. Not that I want to discontinue it or anything like that. Just like this, I don't have an issue with even leading music and doing the preaching and everything else like that. That's fine. I mean, I just, I just want to have other people uh, the opportunity if they feel led to do things to do it. That's all. But I want people to be led to do it, uh, not just to be doing it, because it is a, it is, it is a big responsibility. Um, to get up here and lead the music. It's a big responsibility to teach a class, whether it's Wednesday night, whether it's Sunday morning. You know, it, it is a responsibility upon that person. And I, and again, I feel that that person's got to be led by the Lord to do it because they're going to get everything from the Lord in order to do what they can do as well. So, yes. I, I just just feel like with, with so many people, and it seems like things are going around right now. There's, there's lots of things that's in the air and going around, so if we don't, you know, maybe this will give us a break as far as people get better. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so, uh, you know, so we'll just, for those people who aren't here, but maybe they're online, uh, they'll know as well, but for those people who aren't here, maybe I'll give, we'll give them a holler and let them, for everybody know that there's not going to be Wednesday night Bible study this coming Wednesday. So ready you know, take a little break or, you know, get, people can get back better. You know, we'll just pick it up the following Wednesday as well, so we'll do that um, also. That's agreeable with everybody. <clears throat> but yet, you do have an opinion. Everybody has an opinion here. And everybody has to say so, and we all agree with I think you just meant it. Nobody's no, I it just meant that, <laughs> yes, we have an opinion, but nobody's giving it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I try. Yes, yeah, so we did. So absolutely. So yes. Well, let's continue then. We sing unto the Lord. Hymn, hymn, uh, hymn number 15, a familiar song. Come, come thou found of every blessing. <clears throat>
four of the different ones. Again, pray for my wife, Deborah. She is at home sick. Uh, pray for her and what she's dealing with. Sarah, Sarah has COVID. So pray for her. I think this is the third time that she's had COVID so far. So remember her in prayer. She's dealing with that. Clarence texted me last night and told me he was under the weather. So pray for Clarence as he's dealing with that. Pray for Al Newton. Al Newton is dealing with back problems as well as leg problems. Um, <clears throat> also, he has other issues as well that he's also dealing with as well. Um, not, but very little appetite. Is that right, Ginger? Right, very little appetite. Very little appetite and, uh, not, and not, not having any strength to do anything. So just pray for him as he's dealing with this. And I, this is what, the second or third time that he's basically has been going on like this, uh, off and on. So pray for him as he is dealing with that. So I think this is the worst right now. You think this is the worst? I think so. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. He's barely able to walk. Right. Right. Yes. Uh, pray for all the people in Hawaii and what they're dealing with. That that this that tragedy, disaster where you've got uh, deaths of people, where buildings have been burned to the ground, uh, property has been devastated, and uh, and just a multiple of things that have been taking place there in Hawaii. And from what I have read and seen, uh, unfortunately, it's, this is going to take years and years for them to get back, um, even, even if they can, to where they were before. But just pray for that. Pray for our, uh, for some cities and states and places, too, in the U.S., where there are brush fires and, and burnings as well. You know, up around Mississippi, they had places there. Uh, I'm coming back and from... From there, and in, there are places where I saw where there were fires as well, uh, coming coming from uh, coming from Tennessee, but coming into Alabama, and they're going through parts of Mississippi as well. I, I noticed that there were places where, uh, because of the heat, uh, a lot a lot of states are have burn bans in place, uh, and there have been lots of fires that have taken place off of interstate. If you go down, you. So pray, pray for also for the many people dealing with the burns and the fires that are taking place in our areas as well, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, and other places where it is so hot and so dry, where these things have, have devastated so many people. Uh, pray for our teachers as well as students as they are basically... Uh, this past week was the first week of full school, but pray for all the teachers as well as the students and all that takes place with that. Uh, do remember them in prayer. Um, uh, traveling mercies for those who are traveling and will be traveling as well. Uh, prayer of Thanksgiving, my wife and I, we had a, a good time in Gatlinburg this past week. Uh, cool weather and uh, nice time as far as with everything, so it, that was good as well. Miss Ginger. <coughs> Just continue to pray for the and myself. Yes. Okay. And for my children and grandchildren. Yeah. And for Brian especially because he's been yeah. experiencing some problems. Have they found anything, Brian? Yeah. I mean, one of my bypasses is okay. basically collapsed. But I mean, get my heart made some of his own bypasses to go around it. Okay. But they had some medication and wanted to start doing cardio. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad it wasn't nothing major as far as with that. So we'll just keep you in prayer. But just, just remember you, Ginger and Dolores, and your husband. And continue to remember Linda, uh, Michael, <coughs> Linda, 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 Linda. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We sure will. Yes. Pray, pray for them and, and other other family members as well. We sure will. Other prayer requests. Other concerns. Thanksgiving. Johnny Garrett. Yeah, Frank. Uh, I know it's. We're not having hurricanes here, but the place yes. for the folks in California. Uh, I don't like their politics, but we look kind of low now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. yeah, because they're going to have some flooding off of this. Yeah. Yes, yes, they are, yeah. I, I am surprised that they're still going to have a game tonight, I mean, unless they canceled it, because that hurricane's going right over that stadium and that place. I just can't. I mean, they're not. 
they're just they're not that place is not built to handle that much money. I agree. Yes. So you know, you're right. And all those people that when they're dealing with it, is this the first time in, in what? I don't know, it's a long time. It's been a, it's been a long time since they did anything there. Yeah. 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 I've always been. Yes. Loss of property for sure, but hopefully not loss of life. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. You can always replace that, but not the line. That's right. Yeah. And do do pray for you and, and Debbie as well. Pray for both of you, especially you with your ongoing battle with your treatments and everything, and your family, and also uh, Beverly and, uh, and the family in Kentucky. Uh, pray for them also. Sure will. Yeah. Other prayer requests. Oh, uh, Kim and uh, Kim and Anime too. They're, they're not with us there. Uh, anime has been feeling all the weather too. Is that right, Karen? Right. Yeah. So, so pray for both of them as they uh, are dealing with that. I'm sure others are too, or are dealing with things. Uh, I see Janet had to leave again. Her stomach all of a sudden went <coughs> kaboom on her. Yeah. Okay. So pray pray for Janet. She been she been having issues with it, but every now and then it flares up on. So pray, pray for her, we sure will. Uh, like I said, it's worth with that. Other prayer requests? Ah, Ms. Renee. My name is okay. Okay, will do. How's he doing? So far, so good, but they're, uh, they've been going light on the academics. Okay. And the academics are fixing the ramp up. Okay. Just giving the kids time to adjust to being in school. Okay. So it's fixing to get rid of it. Okay. Pray, pray, pray for an A&M, Stephen Jr., because this is the first time he's in school. Well, he, up until, um, I think, the first time. Yes. Second. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
just for Callan Park and Bayou Wood because basically that's the same thing with Whisper and Taurus. Yeah. And right. Sadie said, but they've been telling her that since they were five. Okay. And Sadie said, I'm not letting my kids walk to school. Right. And you know, I mean, it's about sure. what four four blocks. Oh, yeah. so More than that. Oh, yeah. I'm here all the way around. Yeah. But they said it's this crazy. parish said they don't have to. Problem. But they don't have to provide a bus for that subdivision anymore. Oh, that's crazy. So I can quit paying my tax. School tax is crazy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, school taxes. And I call my representative and say, hey, what's going on? Yeah, it's it nuts. It doesn't make sense. I mean, okay, if, it's, if, the, if the weather's, you know, right. 70 degrees and it's uh, a sunny morning, don't get any more. But what about when it's uh, you know, 30 degrees and uh, it's right. raining? That's right. Yeah. Or even if it's 70 degrees and it's storming out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, your kid goes to school all wet. Even with the umbrella. Yeah, just, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. What you do is whoever your uh, school board member is. Yes. Uh, yeah. I would, I would give them a holler. Else. Yes, absolutely. Let somebody else have a shot at it. That's right, yes. But we'll keep that in prayer for all, for all the kids because it's but not. It's not just here. I mean, in Louisville, Kentucky. They started school last week. But yes. They, after the first day, they shut it down. They shut the uh, school down. Because the school buses, they were all, they thought they had it figured out, but after the first day, they realized it. Oh, no. The first day, kids didn't get home until 11 o'clock at night. Wow. And they were already on the bus, so the parents couldn't get them. Wow. And it was insane. So they just shut the school down. Wow. Jingles. That's nerve wracking. That's nerve wracking. The kids from grandparents and everybody. Well, it is, especially when you work and you yes. have an hour. I mean, Sadie works in yes. battery now at uh, East Jefferson, so she leaves. So wow. it's not like she could just jump in her car and hurry right. up and get there. Yes. Yeah. Wow, she is. But we'll keep y'all in prayer. We'll keep everybody in prayer, school kids and people who have children as well, because that's an ongoing issue that's taking place. And not just in one subdivision. It seems like it's happening in a lot of, a lot of subdivisions and a lot of places as well. Uh, because of that, so we need to keep that in prayer as well. Yes? Stop my buses and bus drivers. More bus drivers, especially in St. Anthony. Yes. They're owner operators. Yes. And you know, they don't get paid a whole lot. They're responsible for all the maintenance on their buses and right. everything else. Right. And the state has mandated that they have tracking devices on their buses, which the way they're hooked up is they own hours a day. Wow. So compounds bus problems because so many buses. Mm -hmm. The drivers get out there go crank up the buses in the morning and the batteries are dead. Because it because it's being monitored twenty four seven. And she so was. they're going to two batteries and three batteries. Right. Three hundred and fifty dollars a piece. Wow. That they have to show up. Right. Yeah. And we are on bus problems. <coughs> So just pray for, okay, pray for the whole situation. It's not just the bus drivers, but it's the whole system. I think it's the whole system. So yeah, it has to be it has to be right down as far as all that. Pray for those who are not with us this morning for whatever reason. Those even not even mentioned, but the many people who are not with us. Pray for them and what's going on as as for with different people as well on our prayer list. Just continue to remember the different people. Uh, and what they are dealing with as well, so pray for, pray for them also. Uh, many many other people. And what, what goes on? Pray we you know pray now because we got this upcoming election going to be taking place in October, and before you know it, October will be here. You're going to have to decide who you want to vote for. Uh, we're voting on different things. You know, new parish president, governor. Uh, council people, or whatever the case may be. But you have a lot of things that will be coming up and you're going to be voting on it come October uh, here in St. Tammany Parish. So pray now uh, and get, get the information that you need. Also, with so much going on with this worldwide disaster that's taking place, uh, 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 the hurricane uh, that's taking place in California, what's taking place in Hawaii and other places as well, I would caution you to be careful of scammers. Please, be careful. Again, I urge you and I caution you, do not, under any circumstances, no matter who they are on the phone or what they are, 
Do not give them any kind of personal information. None. Zero. Do not, I repeat, do not give them their, your, your, your routing number, your, your bank account number. Do not give your social security number. Do, do not give your birthday. They don't need to know all of this. Uh, even if it is for, they say, oh, this is for a good cause. We're going to help out the people here, here. Don't do it. They call in you. You're not calling them. And you don't know if that person on that phone is legitimate or not. I would caution you, please, now, because there's a lot of scammers out there. Now with this thing with the YE and uh, going on and you want to do this and other people as well. So caution. Don't give out personal information at all. Yes, ma'am. If you would like to donate. Yes. For disaster relief for Maui, yes. you can go to Hawaii's Southern Baptist Conference page. Okay. And there's a button on their page okay. where you can donate. Okay. Or you can go to Samaritan's Purse right. and donate there also. Yes. They are, you know, legitimate. Okay. Yeah. But but again, it's just any anybody that once you know calls you and they say hey, don't give don't give out any 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 information. You know, I just hate to see anybody lose everything in their bank account or checking account or savings account or whatever the case may be. Be careful. Just be real careful because there are a lot out there. And make it a matter of prayer as well uh, concerning that also. So yes, let's go to Lord in prayer. Almighty God, as we come at this time, Lord, there have been many things that we've talked over, there have been many things that we've been lifted up to you this morning, and we lift up all of these prayers, all the concerns, the many things that are going on in all of our lives. We have many, many people who are under the weather who are sick, and we pray for healing, for help, for grace and mercy in their life. We pray for the many people who are struggling and going through difficulties. Whatever may be going on at work, at home, or even the battles they have within within themselves. We pray and we ask for your strength, for your grace and your mercy. We pray for the for the for all that's taking place there in Hawaii and what they're dealing with and we lift them up as well. And what would be taking place looks like in the southern part of California with the hurricane going across there. We lift up those people. And many other places, states and cities that are being devastated by uh, the lack of rain and there's drought and there's burnings uh, going on and taking place and we pray for the many people there and what they're dealing with as well. Again, we lift up all the prayers, all the concerns and many, many things that are going on in all of our lives and uh, family, friends and other things. Lord, the bus situation with the school kids, we, we pray for that situation that you'll help in that area and to be with them as well. Uh, for those who are not with us this morning because of sickness or whatever may be going on, we're praying for them and we ask for your help in their lives as well. We pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, whomever they may be, a friend, a co-worker, a family member, or even a complete stranger. We pray for their soul and we pray for them as well. Again, continue to be with us, help us, and watch over us. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let us stand at this time as, as, as we come to take up the offering, as we have the offertory hymn, hymn, hymn number 184, Jesus is all the world to me.
Lord, we want to thank you for your many, many blessings. Thanks for seeing to our needs, for helping us, being with us, and watching over us. We come at this time and we give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. And we ask, Lord, that you will see to it that all is collected, that it's used for the furnace of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. church in Thyatira. The Lord has, Jesus has called his church to be holy and to maintain purity by dealing with sin in the midst of the church. By dealing with it, not allowing it to, to stand. And this is what we see here in this church as well. Uh, this church in Thyatira has been <clears throat> plunged into uh, very deep into Satan's deception. And this is basically the longest of the letters of the seven churches uh, <clears throat> in relationship to how long they are. One of Paul's first converts uh, in Philippi was a lady from the city of Thyatira, Lydia. was his first convert on the banks. And she, his Lord opened her heart and she came to know the Lord. Now Thyatira was a city that was that was made, that manufactured wool and linen and leather and dry goods, among other things as well. Um, but it was also it was a Roman colony. Um, it was a Roman city, city, and it had, unfortunately, like the other that we saw last week, it had a, a church or it had a worship time where they worshipped the emperor. Uh, people went and worshipped them, but they also had, as well as other deities, the Greek gods. And one of the Greek gods here was, of course, the sun god, Apollo. And they had a church to that as well. Uh, so today we'll, we'll see and look into this letter that was sent from the Lord Jesus Christ, whose eyes are like blazing fire, as he so relates. Notice, first of all, as with the other letters that we have read so far from this here, notice the praise and the commendation that was given to the church in Thyatira in verses 18 and 19. These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire, whose feet are like burnished bronze, burnished bronze, I know your deeds, your love, your faith, your service, your perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. Notice Jesus here, he praises the church, and he, and he basically, up until this point, he's praising all the churches for their accommodation, for what they're doing, and for what he sees them doing. But here he's dressing them as the Son of God. And notice he says, these are the words of the Son of God. And he's letting them know that he is the son of God and not Apollo, who is the sun god. See, he is refuting what, what many are worshipping in Thyatira as Apollo, who is the sun god. I am the son of God. I am the son of God. Not the sun god, but I am the son of God. And it was he in, in his eyes, and notice he says, his, uh, I am the one who whose eyes are like blazing fire. In other words, again, he's relating to them. He says that he has the eyes that see all things, and his feet, burnished bronze, 
is, is basically polished bronze, and he says his feet that will trample out the impurity that has taken place. He is he. Again, going back to, uh, again, chapter 1, he's identifying himself like he did in chapter 1. I am he. I am Jesus Christ who says he sees. And notice he sees what? Their deeds, their love, their faith. He, he sees that they're growing, they're maturing. He sees the work that is being done in 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 the church and in the Christian in the lives of many, many Christians there. And there are few in comparison to how many people are in the city of Tara But he says, I see all that is going on. See, with them, it wasn't just a religious activity or going through the motions. It was basically a genuine display of their life and their faith in Jesus Christ. Genuinely displaying it. For all to see. And, now, and if you notice, notice the five things here that Jesus here praises them for. He praises them for their deeds, for their love, their faith, their service, and their perseverance. He says, I see all of this. He's, Jesus, it's wonderful what you're doing. And, and he says, and not only that, you're doing it, but you're doing even more than you did at first. In other words, you're continually to grow. You're not just staying in one place, but you're growing in grace and in truth. And in these areas here, you're, do, you're doing even more. All of this that they're doing now is the product of Jesus in their life by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he sees this, and I think others see it as well, as they're growing more and more. You're doing even more than you did at first. It wasn't just enough for them to do and to start. They were doing even more. And, and not just to get the recognition from Jesus, but it just shows the growth that was taking place within this church by the few mature believers or the few believers that were in the church itself. And again, in comparison now, there's only a few believers there, but they were growing. They were expressing. They were doing what the Lord wanted them to do. And they continued to do that. However, just like in the other churches, or at least in the last church we saw in other churches as well, there were issues. There were problems. There were things that were going on. Notice what took place and what was happening, even though he praised them for that. There were things going within the church, happening in the church. Notice in verses 20 through 23. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and eating of the food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. <clears throat> so I will cast her on the bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children down, then all the churches will know that I am he who searches the heart and minds, and I will pay each of you according to your deeds. Amazing, isn't it? He sees all of these things going on. Now, this church was doing good. Faith, love, deeds, perseverance, you know, all these things that we're doing. But they were also, they were allowing the tolerance of evil within the church. They were allowing these people to come in, and especially this one person who was like unto Jezebel in the Old Testament. And here the Lord says you have, you have allowed this, this woman Jezebel, whether this was a, 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 her actual name or a, a woman, it might have been the actual woman named Jezebel who was in the church, but again, she was likened to the prop, uh, likened to Jezebel of the Old Testament that Elijah had to deal with. Same thing. In other words, it was evil, um, and they were permitting this false prophetess to influence, to come into the church and teach 
the Christian people that it was okay to do sexual immorality, to eat food sacrificed to idols, and then on the other hand, worship the one true God. A contradiction. He was teaching them to compromise their faith, their teaching, and what they were doing. It was, and, and what happens is, is this, if it continues on, it would hinder their growth as Christians. It would hinder them and, 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 and all that was taking place. And so, also, she was teaching that the believers, that it was okay to compromise with the Roman government and the religion of the Roman government in order that they may not lose their lives or their jobs. And, and, that, and that was the wrong thing to do as well. So, so see, back then, if they bowed down to the Roman emperor, Caesar, or whoever was in the Roman emperor, Nero, whoever it was, they would not have they would not have to worry about losing their job or their lives as well. And she was saying, it's okay to go ahead and do that. After all, what, what difference does it make anyway? And, 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 and if you notice in here, she, she was according to Jezebel that it was okay to have, be sexually immoral and to eat food that was sacrificed to <clears throat> idols. It was no big deal. So she was teaching them to do all of those things. And, and the Lord has seen all of this. He's, and he says, you have tolerated the woman Jezebel. And they should not have tolerated it. They should have thrown her, thrown her and, and anyone who follows her out of the church. Actually communicate them out. Leave them. Tell them go someplace else and, and, and do all of that stuff. Here, in the church, what should be done is to worship the one true God and his teachings and his doctrine and what he says to be true. It's to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and that how Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins and that how by his blood they were cleansed and made whole. You see, that's what they needed to continue to do and not allow all of these other things to infiltrate into the church and destroy the work of God and it will destroy their growth and how they grow as Christians. And notice, it's not that the Lord doesn't want people to come and be saved. Notice he says, I'm patient with this woman. I'm patient with her. In other words, the Lord wanted her to repent. But this woman and her followers, they had no, they did not want to repent. They said, no, Lord, we're not repenting. We like doing these things. We have no issues with it, but the Lord did. And he wanted them, and the Lord is always patient with people, wanting them to come to him. But they needed to repent of their sin. They needed to get rid of the sin. And repent means what? Turn completely around, about face, and, and get away from there. Stop doing what you're doing. That's what it means to repent. Stop doing that sin completely. And now, go back on track to where you used to be. But the Lord has been patient with her and gave her time. But she refused to repent. She refused to give up. Though, and, and also refused to repent. And if she refused to repent, they would be suffering and her children. Now, her children is not necessarily um, biological children. These are spiritual children. These are children that are following her and her ways. These, these, these are the children here. And they followed away in what she would do. And notice the Lord says, I will deal not only with her, but I will also deal with her children. I will strike them down. However, if they repent and turn from their sin and stop doing that, the Lord would be gracious. And the Lord would. And, and, they, and they would find grace, mercy, and forgiveness. If they would turn to the Lord himself. But, but notice he says, he says here, uh, in verse 22, he says, I cast her on the bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer, in, suffer intensely until they repent of her ways, and I will strike her children dead. Now, when it says he, those who commit adultery, 
it, it may not mean sexual uh, adultery, but it may mean uh, spiritual adultery to where they are worshiping these idols and these false gods and these false things in the relationship, and then, then they come back and they want to relive, and then they want to worship God. You can't do both. God says, I, I am a jealous God. What is the very first commandment? The very first commandment. There it says, Worship the Lord thy God and only Him. And only Him. You know, many times we see in the Old Testament, every time they would they would turn away from God, it would always be turned to idols. They would they would fall, they would prostrate themselves down, and they would commit spiritual adultery. And they would do it blatantly, openly. And here, this was going on as well. And notice he says he will make her die. It, it, it will strike her children dead. And, and all the churches will know that I am the one who searches the hearts and the minds. And I will repay each one of you according to your deeds as well. Now this death could not, was not only a physical death. We have to understand that. For the unbeliever. It wasn't just the physical death. But the other death would be the second death. And that is a total separation from God at the time of death. Where it would be a spiritual death. Totally separated from God. You see, for, for, all, for all people, we will die either once or we'll die twice. Everyone's going to die physically. Everyone. <clears throat> Unless the rapture happens right now. Then we won't have to worry about it. We'll just be raptured up. But some people, they're going to die a second death. And that second death is a total separation to where they will die spiritually. They're, they're where they, they will be, um, where where they'll be thrown into the lake of fire, you know. And sadly, after he judges Jezebel and her followers, it says others will know and realize that nothing will be hidden from whom, from the one whose eyes are like the blazing fire, as he says. His eyes will see all things, just, just like it says in Hebrews chapter four and verse thirteen. It says everything. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him on whom we must give an account. So again, remember, all of us, every one of us here, everyone listening to my voice even, we will all stand before God one day. Every one of us. That is something you're not going to get away with. You're going to stand before God and it says you have to give an account all that you've done. Have to. And you give a count of everything. Our deeds, our life, and all that we have done. You know, it's a sad thing that we, you know, even in a in a in the in Revelation itself concerning the dead and what would take place. You know, it, we're given a little glimpse of it in, in the at the end of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12 and following, he says, I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. And the books were open. And then another book was open, which is the book of life. But the dead were judged according to what they have done as recorded in the books. So you see, there are, there, we, we'll get to that later, but there, there are books. There's one is the book of life, to where the believers' names are there in the book of life. But then there's another book for the unbelievers, to where all that they have done is recorded. And you may ask, why isn't it recorded for us? Because for the believer, when we come to know Christ and repent of our sins, everything we have done has been wiped away, cleansed. We've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no counting of anything because there's no recollection of any sin. Not that God doesn't remember, but remember what he does say. He says, I remember them no more as far as the east is to the west. Because he chose to, because we've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. You see, that's the awesome thing about coming to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and being covered by his blood. We're covered. Remember when the death angel went over Egypt and the people, and some of the people were killed because they didn't have the blood over the doorpost. But for those who were in the house where the blood of the Lamb was there, the death angel passed over because they saw the blood. The same thing with our sins. It's not that we've done enough good. 
It's the fact that we've been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and what he's done at Calvary. But for those who haven't, it says they will be judged. He says the, ju the dead will judge according to what they have done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead where it was, the death and, and Hades gave up the dead and where they were. And each person was judged according to what they had done. And then death and Hades, that is, those people who are in death and Hades, were thrown into the lake of fire. And the lake of fire is the second death. Not that they die, but that they will be there forever and ever and ever in the lake of fire. And it says, if anyone's name is not found written in the book of life, he or she was thrown into the lake of fire. <clears throat> See, this is what here what Jesus is, is talking about and what is being talked about here as well. I will repay each one according to what they have done. See, but he's already done it for us. He's already went to Calvary for us. And so the issues and the problems within the church were they were allowing these things in there. And, it, and, and they were allowing these things to fester and to grow. To call, again, I repeat, to cause them to stop growing in the Lord. So consequently, what happens is if they stop doing it, if they continue to do those things, they're not doing what the Lord would have them to do. And things would change. There would not be a change for the good as well. And then the last thing we see in verses 24 and the end, 29, the instructions that was given to the faithful people, to those who are not going along with this woman Jezebel and all of her uh, talking, the exhortation, the warnings here. Notice he says, Now, I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not, who do not hold to her teachings and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you. Only do what? Hold on to what you have until I come. To him who overcomes and does my will, to the end I will give the authority over the nations. He will rule, the, he will rule them with an iron scepter. He will dash them to pieces like pottery, just as I have received authority from the Father. I will also give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Let him hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. The Spirit of God is talking to them, to those who are faithful, to those who are doing what they're doing. He says, keep on doing it. Don't stop. Don't listen to what is being taught by this false prophet, prophetess and all of these things that are going on. See, not everyone within the church was unfaithful, but there were still some in the church who were listening to this woman, who were going along with what she was doing and putting their seal of approval upon what she was teaching as well. There were those in the church. And notice, Jesus doesn't make any special demands. Again, they were just to remain faithful, Resist the evil practice and keep on doing what they were doing. Now, what are the secret things that he, he talks about here? Notice he says, he, he also says it well to, to them. He says, um, do not hold on to her teachings and have, and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets. And the see, th the, these things he's talking about is what, within the church as well, is what the Gnostics were teaching. And the Gnostics were teaching, it's okay to be sexually immoral. It's okay to eat things sacrificed to the idol. Why? Because you, it's your body. And your body and your spirit are separate. They're not together. What you do in the body is okay. Because the body and, and the spirit will be separated one day. And that's, that's a falsehood. But what you do now, it does affect our spirit. What we do. Let's face it, it affects us as a people as well. But they were, they were teaching these things, that it was okay to, to basically to engage in these sins without harming your spirit because the spirit is separated from the body. But the spirit belongs to God. It belongs to the Lord. 
And so I believe here in, in verses 26 and 27 as well, he says, To him who overcomes and does my will, I will give the authority over the nations. He will rule with an odd scepter. Here, yeah, I, I think what he's talking about here, I believe he's referring to, to them who will live and reign with Jesus in his kingdom, and that just like the thief on the cross, we too, we too will be with Jesus and, and as he reigns, we will reign with him as well. Not that we will have authority over anything, but we will, will, we will be with him as he reigns in there. And that he is the bright and morning star, just as he said at the end of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 22, in verse 16, he says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root, the offspring of David, the bright morning star. And that means a lot for us believers. For us Christians, that means a whole lot. To all who remain faithful, to all, we, you will have the light and the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ in us and shine through us as well. Uh, as Jesus indicated, and he told his disciples in Matthew chapter 13, and in verses 40 and following, as he, as he explained the parable of the weeds, and he talks about the parable of the weeds, and he explained this to his disciples, I see the same thing here. He says, as the weeds were pulled up and burned in the fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes, uh, causes sin and all who do evil. They will be thrown into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous... Who are the righteous? We are the righteous, the believers, because of Jesus Christ and what he's done, because Christ lives in us. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has an ear, let him hear. You see, we will shine. Not only will we shine today, but we will also shine when we're with the Lord Jesus Christ in person as well. We will have the glory of the Lord. We will have a glorified body. You know, when the it always amazes me that when Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Jesus was transformed, transfigured, and there was Moses and Elijah, what did they see? The brightness. The brightness of Elijah and the brightness of Moses. Why? Because they were with the presence and in the presence of God. And there they, they were shown uh, what, what it's like to be and what we will be like one day. That we, will, that we will be, just as we will be filled with the glory of the Lord. And it will be radiant, going out, and being shown to everyone uh, concerning it. And so since Jesus is that bright and morning star, we who profess faith in him will also be bright. We'll also shine like the morning star as well. However, this only comes to those who repent, put their trust in Jesus Christ and continue to do. Just as he says, continue to do what you've been doing. Don't stop. And I will urge you as well, for those of you who are truly born again believers, don't stop. Continue to do the things the Lord is leading you to do in relationship to what he wants you to do. Continue to be what? To do the deeds of the Lord. To have love. Have faith. And do service and persevere. Mostly persevere. Hey, it's hard today, just as it was back then, to persevere in the faith, to keep the faith. We have so many things go against us sometimes family, friends, work, or other things as well that happens. And we need to persevere. And the only way we can do that is in the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ by his power. I talked to the Sunday school class this morning and I said, we need to always 24-7 humble ourselves under God's mighty hand. Humble ourselves. Always humble yourselves under God's mighty hand and he says he will lift you up. Cast upon him all your cares. He will lift you up and he will do these things. And that's what it takes, people, for us to continue to do he tells this to the church of Thyatira, and he's telling this to us today. We need to continue doing what we're doing and persevere in the faith. And I pray.
praying today that you know Jesus Christ. If not, come to know him today as your Lord and as your Savior. Let us stand. <clears throat> Almighty God, as we come at this time, Lord, and if there's anyone, anyone, who is in need of repentance or getting back into a relationship with you, I pray this morning you have spoken to them. I pray today they will come in to know you and, and, and give their and give their life and to you and their heart and all that they have, and they may surrender everything to you. All of this we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. So if God is speaking to you today, you come as we sing hymn number 310, Out of My Bondage, Sorrow and Night. <clears throat> Wednesday. 
for everybody. Again, pray for the many, many people who are under the weather, who are sick, who are dealing with different physical problems and ailments. Just continue to pray for them. There have been many that have been mentioned here this morning. But pray for them and, and, and ask for God's grace, mercy, and help in their life. Traveling mercies for those who are traveling and will be traveling. And, and again, pray for those who are working out in this extreme heat where it gets to be 100 to 115, depending upon the heat factor and everything. Pray, pray for the many people who are there. Again, pray for the people in Hawaii and what they're dealing with, the people in California, and other places as well where we're being devastated by different things, and just pray for them. And as always, pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ, whomever they may be. Pray for them, and pray for their souls as well. Mr. Danny Bryant, lead us in a closing prayer, please, sir. Our Father, 